guys it's me Kara. thank you so much for tuning in um welcome back to my channel so i'm in the hospital exactly one week today um who knew i would have been in the hospital this long but i shouldn't have longer here at the very least i should be le leaving in the morning so um i came in to the hospital one week ago for uh blood pressure issues and so i uploaded a video about that and if you don't like long videos then that video is not for you but sometimes my contacts are bothering me but sometimes the long videos really help um for those seeking um the details you know i feel like everyone is so rushed um but there are times when we forget that the details matter so if you don't like those videos and i'm sorry but not sorry the video is going to help someone Anyway, my second baby was delivered two nights ago by a C-section. Um, up until the time that she was pulled out, well, after that time, I have a very vague memory of what happened. But I'll get that sorted out. But I came in a week ago for signs of an issues with blood pressure. And um, needless to say, fast forward. Um, the situation became very dire, and so my baby was delivered via by emergency C-section. So I've had two C-sections, two C-section deliveries. I joined VBAC groups to just kind of get motivated to have a VBAC. That didn't happen, and that is okay. I'm okay. I know sometimes people get hell-bent on having a VBAC or just not having a C-section. I'm not the type of person. I had a very open mind. So what even though the events leading up to the delivery was were traumatic and I can talk about that in another day, the C section itself was a little bit familiar. Okay, I hope that makes sense. When they delivered my daughter, I didn't see her. I asked one of the nurses to the lighting in here is so bad i asked one of the nurses to um take some pictures for me and they were kind enough to do that y'all i'm sorry the lights but i can't even i can't even move where i am but um one of the nurses she was kind enough to take some pictures for me and uh she did that uh the c-section itself i asked my doctor to not tie my hands and feet because that really stresses me out i know some doctors do that because they don't want the patient to overreact or slap them or do something crazy in the middle of a procedure um so she didn't tie my hands and feet and she also had background music so that was nice but um, when they delivered i didn't see my daughter because of course they had to whisk her away it was uh, her gestational age was 30 weeks thereabouts, so 29 and 6 days about, so let's just say 30 weeks. And, of course, I didn't get to do skin to skin or anything like that. So, second C-section, but different experience with baby number two post-delivery. Anyway, um, then I was placed in ICU. For monitoring and all of that my blood pressure came down because if you listen to my previous video the issue that i was having was actually um with atypical preeclampsia so i didn't present a classic case but it was actually atypical preeclampsia so they um kept me in icu for a while like a day and then the night i was able to see my daughter and Ron was there, Ron was in the hospital with me. Um, he checks in, you know, he still has to go home to be with Abney, but he checks in. And so we were, we both were able to go see the baby. Now, I cannot speak for Ron, but I can speak for myself. When I went in there, I was wheeled. Okay, so of course I was on a wheelchair and all that. And then they, um, you know, uh, opened the door. I didn't know what to expect. And when I opened the door and I saw like the incubator crib, I don't know if there was a special name for that. 
Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm on so much medications right now. But anyway, um, I saw this little human. That's the best way I can put it. I was so shocked. She was so tiny. I was thinking that my daughter, my other daughter, Abney, has a doll that has thicker legs than my second. Like, it was so shocking for me to see how small she was. Even though I was told she was two pounds, seven ounces, it didn't register that she was that small. She was really, really tiny. Like, her head and everything, it was just very, very, very shocking to see a, a human so tiny. And, you know, if you have you know, you gave birth to a preemie, you know exactly the type of feeling I'm talking about when you see how little they are. And I was overwhelmed. I became very overwhelmed immediately. I was like, what have I done? What was wrong with my body? So I went through this cascading, you know, this, this roller coaster of emotions. Like there was a feeling of guilt and then there was um not regret because i knew the procedure was necessary because then we both would have been in danger right so they had to get her out due to the pre issues but there was this roller coaster of emotions where i felt really really i struggled emotionally in that moment i felt every single emotion you could have felt i felt love and just overwhelming feeling of despair and then i was saying to myself, what the heck have I done? What was wrong with me? Then I, I felt like, okay, we can overcome this and do this. It was just really, really overwhelming. And I was saying, why didn't someone prepare me for this? It was very, very traumatic for me. So for a while there, I was just only able to sit down and constantly stare at her and saying to myself, we're going to make it through. We're going to be okay. We're going to make it through. We're going to be okay. Because guys, she was, she is so tiny. So, so tiny. And then Ron was just, I guess Ron was in a little bit of awe as well. Shock. He just sat there and just trying to process everything. And of course, that is an emotion that you, you, you know, I'm not going to dismiss that sort of thing. It's very traumatizing when you would have gone through something like preeclampsia and all of that stuff, the type of pregnancy I've had, with the pandemic going on. I mean, it's not even an excuse, it's a thing. And then to have a delivery and then to see your preemie baby. So I just wanted to come on here and just share that. Um, I feel like I'm in a place where I'll need a lot of help and support moving forward. The C-section this time around, the recovery is rough so basically there's an incision on top of my old incision they had to work out the old scar tissue and it feels like fire um i remembered with abony the first time by the second day i was walking around with assistance but i was walking and i was able to hold her and all that stuff this time around i don't know how i would have made it i still need help to get up go to the restroom um this morning my blood pressure bottomed out like it was too low so when i went to the restroom and i had two nurses in there with me they saw like my eyes and everything was you know i was just about to pass out so i ended up having um a blood transfusion so i have i had two bags you know so that is the last bit of hopefully iv business that i have to deal with and um it took about a total of five or six hours to get that done just sitting here um i think uh i think i was probably a little bit anemic which didn't show because you know the thing about preeclampsia is that sometimes it presents itself as a situation where your blood work is fine but then that's just it's just masking Okay, and then um, over time, 
you know, if they keep drawing your blood and, and, and testing, then you're going to see the true, like, you're going to see that you're anemic, you're going to see that, you know, all of that stuff going on. And then yesterday as well, I had, like, um, magnesium sulfate, because they give you that after um, you struggle with preeclampsia, just so you don't get seizures. So they give you a full bag of magnesium sulfate, plus other fluids. So the doctor was trying to figure out, did I just get diluted too much or is it just that I was anemic to begin with um I don't really know I don't really care um I just know I got the transfusion and I feel a whole lot better so the goal today is to get out of this bed without assistance and just try to move around because I know very well about blood clots and things like that and I passed a few but not anything that we do not know that would happen postpartum right so anyway guys i had to take a little break because um the nurse was coming in and i needed to pee pee so the fact that i was going to get that help i stopped the video because i cannot go to the restroom by myself and when i sit there i have to wait like a good minute or two before there's sign of anything you feel the urge to go but when you would have had surgery you just need to sit there and I think that's probably the case whether you had a C-section or a vaginal. It just takes some time to feel normal, okay? So anyway, um, this second time around is really rough. Um, unlike with Ebony, that when I was able to just kind of uh, get up the next day and walk around and hold her and breastfeed and all this stuff, I can't do that now. So the plan is to manage my pain because that is a lot. Um, I'm on medication for that. The strong stuff and the not so strong stuff. And when I manage my pain, well, then maybe they will trust that I can move around the room well enough on my own. So that's the goal because I'm in a lot of pain. It feels like my incision is on fire. Um, that is how that pain is manifesting. It feels like it's, it's just, it's an incision. It's going to feel like it's on fire, right? And then, um, now that I have enough fluids and stuff in me, I should be able to walk around the room. And I think that would help. I'm also very gassy. They keep checking my fondness. And if you've had this done, like if you're a woman and you've had this done, you know, that's not fun. It's the one thing I absolutely hate postpartum um what else and i'm just here i don't know if i'll ever make a video on how to prepare for a second c-section or whatever um i was going for a v-bag but it ended up with a c-section and i'm okay with that um but the second time around may not be as smooth as your first time or your first time may have taught you some stuff and you're just better prepared your second time so i don't know everyone's experience is just unique and that's it just it is what it is so i'm here just relaxing um they're gonna keep checking my vitals i know they're supposed to so i had the transfusion done they're gonna come take more blood um just to make sure everything is okay on uh uh just to make sure that you know like there's no craziness going on then they'll also check my vitals because i can still have a reaction um they're gonna check that make sure i don't have a fever or anything like that and i think i'm just gonna stay here the night that is one thing i would say if you can use the time um that's given to you for your c-section go ahead and use it because when you go to your house you're gonna miss the hospital bed and the support and things like that i'm already trying to figure out how am i gonna make it right but i can't stay here forever either so that's it guys i just wanted to share my initial reaction when I saw my baby. Um, I'll be seeing my baby every day and um, just try my best. It's such a, it, it was really wild how everything unfolded, but I'm here, she's here, and there's a lot of figuring out to do. Bye.